Daniel, Stanley, and Ursa. Okay. Um, the objective was everybody probably knows these by now, but um, to construct a wood out of balsa wood and glue and have it support the center load. And we also wanted it to um, comply with the given parameters of the project, which was 32 <coughs> inches span. Uh, it couldn't be taller than 9 inches and have a clearance of 6 by 6 and to attain a high strength to weight ratio. And these are the basic dimensions of our bridge. We had the 32 inch span. Um, each of these is a plank right here. And these were seven by or seven by three. And then the substructure, this part right here, we had five different members and we put them in a design that would oppose the moment diagram of our actual bridge. Well, material selection, um, of course, we had to use balsa wood, so we procured uh, half inch and eighth inch thick members. For glue, we initially started out with wood glue, but we ran low, so we went and procured Gorilla Glue and actually mixed the two initially until we fully ran out of the wood. Uh, of course, we used a hacksaw <laughs> to shape and form our members, a drill to drill the hole in the center, tape measure, lots of clamps. Um, at the bottom, you see the total cost, $30. We wanted to add uh, an extra diameter, I guess, of our real world application of constructing the bridge. So we gave ourselves a budget of about $35. And we wanted to come within budget or under budget and build the most efficient bridge as possible. For our material selection, uh, for our substructure, we wanted to have members that had the highest moment of inertia to resist the applied moment in the center. We feel like our bridge was very original and the roadway was constructed of members that would initially deflect, excuse me, deflect the applied load to soften the load on the low bearing members of our structure. <clears throat> All right, we'll talk about the construction. Um, initially, we had designed a truss system bridge, but as we started building it, we realized we didn't have enough wood, so we sent Alex off to get more. And we all took a walk around Lee Hall and up in the design uh, hall. We found these really big, long members, and so you can grab those, and, <laughs> and, yeah. and then we just started designing around the pieces of wood that we had. We knew that this was going to be the strongest part of our bridge, so we put two together, and that made an inch, because they're a half inch a piece. And then we decided that we were just going to put a road deck that in actuality wouldn't really do good because cars would be driving on this side and this side, but that's not really what the project was. It was holding the center, so we did it like that. And then we put shorter members, shorter members to kind of make an upside down arc. All right, for the design, the reason we did this upside down arc was simply because we idealized the bridge that we were dry, or that we were making as just a simply supported beam with a point load in the middle. And as you all know, with one point load in the middle, it's just going to be a triangular uh, moment diagram with the most moment being at the center. And so in order to overcome that, we made it thicker at the center to make a higher moment of inertia for the wood. And we did that by just gluing the pieces on. In the end, once our bridge was loaded, it ended up failing at one of these members. The glue just kind of split. And if we could probably go back, we just leave those off because this part never broke. It would probably have a lot more weight. And that's about it. So the next time, use better glue. Okay, I will briefly talk about the testing. I took longer than what it was expected. Uh, as you can see, we used all the loads that were available in the room. So we had to meet with Danny at the lab to test it with a UTM machine. Uh, the bridge uh, showed a glue failure when it was loaded at about 650 pounds. So we stopped the, we stopped the testing. And that was pretty much about it. Here are the results.
All right, uh, final load um, when our bridge snapped was uh, a little over 650 pounds. Um, when we weighed it, it uh, came in at uh, 1.635 pounds, gave us just a strength to weight ratio of 409. Uh, when it, like I said, when it failed, our, our glue failed uh, three planks down and caused the, uh, that member to, to shear. Um, it basically just splintered itself. Um, the uh, nice. <laughs> um, good bad points for our bridge. Uh, things we thought we did uh, relatively well. Uh, we, when we got our our, our new members, um, we were able to minimize the amount of joints that we had, and uh, much like weld, we could increase the size of the joint to uh, give it as much strength as possible. <coughs> We tried to use the strongest glue we could find. Uh, unfortunately, we used it wrong. Um, Gorilla Glue is an epoxy. You mix it with water and it gets a lot stronger. We didn't do that. Uh, we, we did that uh, for our roadway, and the roadway was fine. But uh, had we done that, it might have failed in some other way. We'd like to think it would have held a lot more weight. Don't have any idea. Um, but the, we thought the idea of opposing the moment diagram uh, worked out well. Um, so proper use of our glue would have would have uh, done a lot better, but we did we did think that 409 was pretty good strength to weight ratio. Uh, we did a little bit of research to try and compare that to present day existing bridges, uh, and it turns out that's pretty much impossible. Um, as uh, you throw more and more materials into to real life bridges, uh, it becomes a, a, a reduced returns scenario. So. Uh, they, uh, from what we understand, start to approach one, so we can't really compare this to a uh, present day bridge failure, but we thought 409 was pretty good. So, anybody have any questions? If you built this again, would you uh, add a top section? Um, maybe. Uh, compared, to, uh, compared to other bridges, um, ours way a fair amount, so a top section might have it would have added a lot more weight. Don't know if it would have added much more strength considering how it failed to begin with, but uh, and would have added a lot more time and uh, cost of resources. A um, lot more joints, and, and we, we like the idea of just having um, just a few uh, bearing spots. And it might have also conflicted with our idea that you could, uh, if we put the hole for the weight through the center of as many boards as possible so we didn't have as many joints meeting where we would load, um, <coughs> that it would decrease our chances of failure early on. So maybe. Yeah. Where it failed, was that the carpenter's glue or is that the Gorilla Glue? Uh, we think it's the Gorilla Glue or we did it wrong. Yeah, the, it was a it, it, but we didn't <laughs> 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 We, we had this idea for the, the roadway that if we uh, space them out a little bit, it'd give it a little bit of a cushion, um, drilling holes, maybe. Um, we were <coughs> kind of hesitant to do anything that could have weakened it, including testing it. Uh, we wanted to stand on it, but none of us would uh, actually get up and do it. Um, awesome. Would you guys have came in over budget if it wasn't for the donation from our... Uh, well, we found little stickers on the boards, and uh, we think those are prizes. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so, would you, you consider changing the... Uh, or reducing the roadway with... Because you had seven inches, right? Clear, but you had six inches. That's just the requirements. Basically did that because we didn't want to... The risk coming in on it. Um, seven was easy, and it fit with what we had. Was it the size that you got? Pretty much. Well, it, it, we got big, long, thin sheets, and when we hacked them down, four ways came seven. So.